Hello, this is the painting video for Gazaloth, the Baylor. We're going to start this off by um, having a little more footage than was in my video. You can see this Baylor's wing, how curled it was. Um, just rewind it back there and take a look. I'm using a tiny little heater that my wife has for her nail products. Any kind of heater will work, like a heat gun, I suppose, but you don't want to get something that's too hot. You don't want to melt it or burn it. This little heater that I have, it's for the Jamberry fingernail line, whatever. It's some direct heat. And as you can see, as I'm holding it in front of the mini in front of it, it's becoming more ductile. I already did the wing on the left without recording it, which was shame on me because both wings were super curled. <clears throat> Excuse me, like the number three. You can still see the curl. Look at the wicked hook on that thing. So I'm just getting it nice and warm, a little toasty. See how malleable it's getting? I'm sure this works with most minis, but I definitely find that the Norzels Marvelous Miniatures work beautifully. See how nice and flat I can make that now? Um, I Maybe the wings were supposed to be super curled, but they would have been impossible to paint. I wanted to do the objective source lighting on these wings, and I wouldn't have been able to do that with these <clears throat> C-shaped wings. So um, flatten it out here. You can see it's getting nice and straight. And you could shape any part of the mini this way. Um, I actually curled the whip upwards a little bit so it wouldn't touch the base because I knew I was going to do some basing with this guy. Uh, I don't show it in the video, but there we are. Uh, and once you're happy with the shape of the new plastic, you can see my bucket full of cold water that's sitting beside me ready to go. I'm just about to give him a little bath. So flatten this wing out one more time. Make sure that I don't have any kind of weird shaping aspect. Yeah, looks good. Mm-hmm. All right, Cap, give him a bath. I've done this with all the Norzels minis and the Reaper Bones minis as well. And again, it's important your heater is not so hot that it's going to melt the plastic or you know cause it to smoke and turn brown. And there we go. In it goes for 10 seconds, not even. And that literally just solidifies that plastic into the new place. And I've never had any bend back or melt back with it. Shake the water off, and there you go. Two flat wings on a Baylor instead of the curved wings that it came with. Okay, next, mold line cleaning. Again, didn't include this on the video in the movie, and this is time sped. Uh, but I just want to show you that I don't have a problem removing mold lines with these nozzles like some people have. Now, a lot of that coming off is primer because they come pre-primed. I also don't have a problem painting on this primer like some people have said in the forums. Um, I don't mind it. It's just a Vallejo standard gray. I suppose I could paint it, paint it with my Citadel paint, but whatever. So I'm just going along the model, finding these mold lines and scraping them off. The primer's coming off too, and it appears the entire plastic is clear, like the whip and sword underneath the primer, which is kind of neat. I wonder if you... Oh, there's my hair. <laughs> Sorry. As I'm still kind of figuring this out, I get my head in some shots. It's a pain, especially in editing when I do that, and it's why sometimes my minis are off-centered when I'm having filming but I'll get better at it so there we go the uh, the mold line removal now this part is cool because see there are those little connectors that connect the side lightning bolts to the sword I don't know why they did that maybe first well I know why they did it for stability but I've seen some people's finished models on the internet where they still have those like horizontal lines and I truly think those are supposed to be trimmed off as you can see I'm just using my snips there you go there's two per side just give a little snip on those uh, hard plastic pieces, and uh, you will free up your bolts, my friends, which is kind of what you want to do, because you don't want to have a, a lightning sword that's supposed to have electricity sliding off of it with these horizontal, you know, spigots, or what do they call them? I don't know, I'm still kind of new. I don't do much Warhammer stuff, so... Oh, sprues, that's what they're called. My bad. So there we go. So we snip off these sp uh, sprues. Make sure the flat part of your scissors are lined up with the flat part of the piece. And I've also heard that you should snip a little higher than the model itself so you don't cause any stress uh, bending. In this case, I'm okay with it because it's a sword, but I did clip off a bit the base, and next I'm going to use my X-Acto knife to shave and trim off the remaining sprues that aren't nice and flush. Another pro tip, <laughs> if you will... I did this like first after shaping the wings and um, trimming the mold lines. I did this 
and then realized that those lightning bond brands were extremely fragile. You see them there? And I thought to myself, I'll oh, see, I'm like, oh boy, that's super fragile. I hope this doesn't break off. And while I was painting the mini, it was a pain that those things were constantly bending if I grabbed it wrong. So I would suggest you do not snip off the sprues until you're done the mini. Do this as the last step, just so you don't risk uh, wrecking it. Now, luckily, I didn't end up uh, making a mess or breaking them off, as you, as it were. Um, <clears throat> luckily, I didn't do that, but it was a pain, definitely, to be constantly aware. You know, grabbing it upside down and having one of them bend in an odd angle was not very pleasant. So that's about all there is to see here, but I'm just going to keep recording because I'm on the clock anyways, why not? Um, in preparation for the mini to come, that lightning sword was a pain. I ended up doing it three different times, as you'll see in the video. All right, here we go. So what are we starting with? Uh, Evil Sun Scarlet, one of the three reds I used on this guy. Um, I liked using, you know, a guy like this who's all red with nice muscle density and stuff. I like to have multiple colors of red in there. I know you can always use null oil, like my wife suggested I ended up doing, um, to his lower half to, to give a little bit more tone to those muscles. But I kind of regretted it. It looks really cool. Maybe a little comic booky, sure, when it's just solid colors. But there's Wild Rider Red, Evil Suns Scarlet, and um, Squig Orange. These are all the Games Workshop paints, and I like them. I like them. I... I'm blessed to have as many as I have, and that was because I collected them over a long time, get a lot of sales from my local hobby store, um, and promos, you know, buy five, get one free kind of thing. Um, and really, when you compare the cost against the other vices in our life, it's really not that much. And, by the way, I've never replaced a single pot. Out of all the paints that I have, and all the painting I've done, I've never run out of one. Now, I'm, obviously, they do run out, but um, they go a long way, that's for sure, especially some of the colors you don't use very often, like these reds. When are you going to paint something like this whole red? Normally, that's just accents, right? So there's the red going on, the squig orange for highlights, as well as the other one that I said, suns, or whatever. I like doing these uh, commentary videos. It's a lot more casual. So this is a casual GMA tank without so without without the scripts. Excuse me, and obviously with a little bit of burpees. <laughs> Anyways, it is what it is. Okay, Deathclaw Brown. You can see the wings have already got some brown paint on them. And I did this in my last video as well, in Mo Mobius the Green. I do that because I want to see what the colors are going to look like before I paint. See how the rim, you know, I do three different tests to see, well, what will it look like with this? What will it look like with this? And rather than just testing it on a palette, I test it on the actual model, wait till it dries, and then I pick the one I like the most. I think in the future I will um, highlight that in one of these commentary videos so you can see. But in a nutshell, I pre-paint them to see how they're going to look. All right, so now we got some Mourn Fang Brown around the muscle, uh, the bones and the, the structure of the wings. Uh, I tried, I applied a lot of wet blending here. All the paint was still wet and watery, very layer, like very um, wet so that it would wet blend together. Some Rhinox Hide is in there as well. Um, again, I'm not suggesting these colors are the only way to do this. This isn't a paint by numbers, but these are the colors that I put in. Okay, XV88 on his um, um, skirt. Uh, these are the colors I put in the model. So when you see, you can see how the Rhinox hides, see how dark the spines are now, because I did Rhinox hide even though it wasn't in the video. Everything you see in the finished model came from the colors that I'm listing on the screen. So I used XV88 on his um, skirt, and then I did his belt with, again, Mornflang and Rhinox. Okay, so Iron Warriors, which is a beautiful dark metallic mixed with null oil. You can see it on my palette there off to the right. That's really cool because instead of watering down the paint, you use some null oil to water it down, and it gets a nice darker, even darker than Iron Warriors, which I wanted this demon to really have dark metal armor, and it would make the glowy effect later come off really cool. So... I am using this custom blend of Iron Warriors and Null Oil on all of his metal parts. The chains, his bracers, his boots, um, and that's pretty much it. The, the spikes um, on his boots. Okay, so yeah, there's a chain on his back. Gives you an example of the way I'm doing the chains. Yariel Yellow, 
I used four different yellows on this flame. I like doing fire. I didn't spend as much attention to this as I would have, I think, because I because it was clear. I wanted to try and do different things. First coat of Yario yellow, nice and watered down, so it sort of retains some of its transparency. That was my key. When it was lit, I wanted it to glow. I didn't want it to be solid. Ceramite white on the sword. There's my first attempt at the sword. And if you look at the picture of the Balrog, sorry, <laughs> Balor from Forgotten Realms 5th edition, you'll see that it, that's what it kind of looks like. So that was my first try with the lightning sword, just white. And I thought, yeah, that's okay, but mm, the more I looked at it, whatever. Uh, Skeleton Horde, I always love that on bones. So I did use a bone color, wraith bone. I didn't include it in my um, color tips but because there's so few skulls. But wraith bone with a skeleton horde on it, and then I also brushed that XV-88 with skeleton horde. That was like the contrast that I used, or the shading that I used. Troll Slayer orange now. This is the tips of his robe that are kind of singed. Didn't work out as good as my fire giant, but that's because my fire giant had... Um, oh, you guys don't know what my fire giant is. I've done that effect before. So fire dragon blight. This is the basing technique. You use a, a mixture of fire dragon blight plus some yellows in the base, and then we're going to coat it later. So again, some of that fire dragon blight orange on the um, Uriel yellow and some Dorn yellow as well. Now, Behroth blue. Here we go. Taking that white sword, deciding I wasn't happy with it, I'm going to try and draw some lightning on it. And I'm doing just the edges. I want the flat parts to be white and the edges to be blue. I thought that would look cool. I don't know if I got impatient with it. See, they did kind of like the pommel. And then I said, oh, I'll draw some lightning blue. And before you know it, I'm like, what in the hell do I even have here? I've got lightning with edging and white and solid and not solid and flip it over and look at the back and do the same thing and, and then just paint all over it. And then the next thing you know, I had this quagmire and I looked at it as my second lightning sword, which we're about to see, and I decided it looked like shit. I preferred, much preferred the straight white um, lightning sword. That looks like a sparkler. I don't know. There it was. Second try, lightning sword. Does that look better? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I don't think so. Sycorax bronze for these um, jewels on his horns. Um, no nostrils with white. I just used the ceramite white for his mouth and eyes. Snakebite leather was the contrast paint that I used to do his hair, which ended up getting turned red later and then turned back to snakebite orange. Here's my third go at the sword. I'm doing a build up of dark blue. So starting with Cantor blue, a nice deep, like night sky, spacey blue. Then McCraig blue. You can barely tell the difference, but it's there. I'm leaving the little ones to the last. Teclis blue. You can really see that. And I went up those little ones with Teclis. I'm just doing it like a little zigzaggy while it's all wet. And then the white. There you go. There's all the white on top of that. And there's my finished lightning sword number three. And by this point, it's done, boys. Solid effort. I hope you like it. <laughs> I was what I was doing. I'll get better. Some Dorn yellow again on top of that orange. Now notice my finger. So I paint and then I wipe it while it's still wet. I'm trying to just smudge it on there. I don't want it to look like blush strokes or gobby. Cassandoro yellow. Um, I did some dry brushing with Necron on those. Um, actually, can I pause this? Let's see what happens. Okay, the answer, you cannot pause that. <laughs> I did some dry brushing of Dorn Yellow under the wings, some Imric Blue on the wings. That's the beginning of these uh, object source lighting. I did some Necron as well on the back of his greaves, which didn't get caught in video. Some white lines on top of these wings. Um, to, again, make it look super light. About on, a bat on black, just trying to make those boulders. And Morden Earth. It's a technical paint from Games Workshop. Splat that all over the place. Now I'm on the front of the mini. Troll Slayer orange again. Abaddon black again. And then more Morden Earth. Just put that shit on everything, like the red, Frank's Red Hot, all over the place. Now we get some white glue and a random stone, some little bushes, scorched tufts. And you can see that Morden Earth has dried and cracked. And you can see the orange coming through. It looks like lava. Some brown battleground. And just like that, that was over. I really rushed at the end. I'm sorry for that. A lot of my dry brushing was done and filmed but because I was shaking the table while I was dry brushing so vehemently with my hands the time-lapse footage looked drunk like it was waving and waving because it was taking its photo every x number of frames but the camera was moving so it was not usable again I'm still trying to work out these kinks so back to what I was saying on the greaves I used some Necron compound or Necron dry brushing to lighten up the back side of those greaves 
and then I added some Cassandoro yellow to them, so that's why they kind of glow yellow. I put some of that on the skulls, I put some of that on the wings, I put some of that everywhere. And then when I did the object source lighting, I did little teeny lines of white, which then I used some shade to turn. I just lightened up some paint and painted on top of the white so it would be transparent. I wanted it to look like light shouldn't be dark. Light should be light. It's another reason why when filming this model for the finished shot, which I'll put up on the screen here, he's lit from the front. where the, And that's why my backdrop doesn't look black. It looks gray. He's lit from the front because those wings, if you light him from the back or the top, they cast shadows on top of themselves. So what you left are these two puck-ups puckets of like blackness which are supposed to be glowing which makes no sense so if you want to light with paint you have to have light from a source unless you know you can produce with some kind of glow-in-the-dark paint right so that's why i lit him from the front and that's why he's so stark from the front and uh and yeah so thank you for listening to the commentary i hope this helps you please email me at paint to life at gmail.com or in the comments below if you have specific questions and I trust that these commentary videos will get better the more I do them. And maybe one day we'll be live stream painting together sometime if, uh, if I get enough interest. So thank you very much. I hope everyone's staying safe and washing their hands. This is GMA Tank signing off. Peace.